Okay, so today is our day two notes, and we're going to start by taking a look at some angle pairs. So within this first row, we have complementary angles and supplementary angles. And it talks about angles one and two for each, so let's add the one and two to our picture. Okay. So complementary angles, the measures of two complementary angles, in this case, one and two, their measures add up to 90 degrees. Or supplementary angles, the two angle measures add up to 180 degrees. We talk about adjacent versus non-adjacent. So adjacent angles, so in this picture here, these two angles, one and two, share a common side. For non-adjacent angles, you can see they don't at all intersect or share a side. So in the supplementary angles box, angles one and two in this picture share that common side or ray, where these two angles do not share a common side. A linear pair, if we break it down, we have a pair of angles along a straight line. So angle one here, angle two, and if we do trace those angles, it is half of a circle. So linear pairs are supplementary. Meaning that their measures add up to 180 degrees. So the non-common side, so linear pair, these two angles share this side right here. The non-common sides or rays would be ray BA and ray BC. These are the non-common sides. Those two sides are opposite rays as they form a straight line. The next angle pair is a vertical angle. So it states below that one and three are vertical angles. So if I just shade the angle, so here's angle one, and here's angle three. Now vertical angles are formed by the intersection of two lines. Remember the intersection of two lines is a point. You can see these two angles are not adjacent or not adjacent. Okay, they don't share a common side. And all vertical angles are congruent. So one is congruent to three, and two is congruent to four. So those angles that I did not shade are also congruent. Let's note that with symbols. So angle one, I'm going to use two tick marks, is congruent to angle three, and then two and four, I'll use three. Flip to the back of this page. We're now going to talk about parallel lines. So it states that in geometry, parallel lines are lines in a plane which do not meet. That is, two straight lines in a plane that do not intersect at any point are said to be parallel. And sorry about the highlighters because I can see they blend through. So I can actually put down a different note page and I'll keep that in mind and maybe use some colored pens. So let's put it in the book. So they're equidistant or the same distance apart. Remember we can name lines with any two points, but you can also name lines with a lowercase letter. So I'm gonna call that top line M and this one N. The symbol to note parallel is this. It's like two arrows, you can use one or two. So if I were to write this in symbols, it would be M parallel N. So the symbol is two vertical lines pretty close together. So down below it says the AD is parallel to CD. Uh, we should have line segments 
above it. Okay, so let's note AB, which is this horizontal line parallel to CD. And our transversal is EF. So when the transversal intersects the pair of parallel lines, we have some angles that are congruent and some that are supplementary. So let's take a look at one, two, three, and four. Well, just using what we talked about with vertical angles and linear pair. So let's take on some examples. Okay, I have some numbers. We can actually find some of the measures, which will be our next example. So up top here, let's just put this parallel line intersected by the transversal. Two and three are vertical, and one and four. So angle two and angle three, and then angle one and angle four. A linear pair would be something like one and two. Is there along a straight line? And then below line AB, three and four as well. Again, there's more in this picture, but we're not going to label all four. So you don't necessarily need two parallel lines cut by transversal to have vertical angles or linear pair. Okay? All of the angle pairs that go with their parallel lines are below. So corresponding angles. And I'll use some colors. So corresponding angles, okay, if I look at angle one above, if I were to take this angle and slide it down the transversal, it would land on angle five. And two, according to the intersection of the transversal line, one is in the upper left. So if we look at the other parallel line the transversal, five is also in the upper left spot. So angle one and angle five. And then if I look at four, which is the bottom right, bottom right down here is eight. Now corresponding angles that's put underneath are congruent. So their measures are the same. Alternate interior, I'll highlight an example in pink. That would be something like three and six. So they're on opposite sides of our transversal. Okay, there's the alternate. An interior meaning between the parallel lines. So let's put INT right here. That's the interior where this would be the exterior and this also would be the exterior. So three and six. And there's actually only one other pair we could list, and that would be four and five. And alternate interior angles are also congruent. Alternate exterior, so we're disregarding this interior space. So that'd be like one and eight. So one and eight are in the exterior and upper side of the transversal, as well as two and seven. So those are also the only two pairs of alternate exterior. And their measures are congruent. The last angle pair, same side supplementary, so or same side interior rather, they are supplementary. So we're in the interior, so within this space here on the same side of the transversal. So that would be something like three and five, and then four and six. And those are the only two pair in the picture that are same side. Okay, so for these, as a brain up on any quiz, I'd like to draw this picture and see if that would help you. So when you go to take any assessment, you draw your two parallel lines, you draw the transversal, and we said up top, here's two vertical angles, they're congruent, and there's here's two vertical angles, so those two angles are congruent. So all the X's, right, have the same measure, and the O's have the same measure. And this up top, this pattern is going to correspond to what's below. So zero or O, X, X, O. So if you have a triangle measures, right, say this one and this one, they don't match, right? One's an O and one's an X. We know that they add up to any X and O add up to 180. 
So your only option here is that you have some own angles or supplementary. So let's take a look at the next example, which is all done numerically. So we have to find each angle measure. Well, you can draw your picture, that little cheat sheet if you want. So here's X, X, O, O, X, X, O, O. So every X, so this one, this one, this one, and this one, they're all the same measure. So that would be this one, this one, and then the 60 slides down here, the three slides down there. So we know that three, the angle three is equal to the angle six, which equals to the angle eight, which is 60 degrees. And then to find all the other angles, that'd be next to no, or take a look at two angles along a straight line. So like one and 60, for example, they are supplementary. So 180, minus 60 is going to be 120. So 1, right, is the same as 4. So those two are the same as these two, which is the same as 5, which is the same as 7, which is 120 degrees. So in these examples in 2 and 5, I'm actually going to modify 3 to not find angle 4, but to find x, so that they're both finding x. So in geometry, when a picture is not provided, the first thing you should do is go draw a picture. Second thing is to write the equation which represents the relationship between the angles or segments within the picture. And then third, solve and then go back and forth and the answer. So it's kind of hard to tell, but number two, the angles are this one and this one. So these would be alternate interior angles. Okay, and alternate interior angles are congruent. So we take their measures and we set them equal. So if I'm going to solve for x, remember I don't need to see all the inverse operations. We would add four both sides. So we get 64 equals 4x divided by 4, and x is 60. The two angles on the right side are this angle right here and this angle right here. Now those two angles are the same side interior. Which are supplementary. So the equation would be 3x minus 20 plus 2x plus 10 equals 180 degrees. Combining like terms first, 3x plus 2x is 5x. Negative 20 plus 10 is a negative 10 equals 180. So we need to do the opposite of subtracting. So the opposite of subtracting 10 is adding 10. We get 5x equals 190. Divide by 5 and x equals 38. Okay. In number 4, it says that these two angles are in the ratio of 2 to 4. Well, those two angles are here and here. So that's a linear pair. Okay, those two angles form a straight line, and linear pairs are supplementary. So I know that one angle plus the other angle is equal to 180 degrees. Now the ratio piece, so the angles are in the ratio of 2 to 4. Well, just on a side note, um, we'll write that over here. The ratio can be written as a colon or as a fraction. So that ratio of 2 to 4 is the same as 1 half, right, which is the same as to multiply them both by 3, so 6 over 12. And we can keep guessing and checking until we get 180, but anytime you see a ratio, okay, I want you to add the x to the number, so 2x and 4x. So what we're doing, and I was adding a terms, is we're going to find that multiplier. What do we multiply both the 2 and the 4 by so that those two numbers don't add up? So then now combining like terms, we have 6x equals 180, divide by 6, and x is 30. Now this one said to find angle 5. So, and before I didn't really state it, so if it was 4 to 5 and then 2 to 4, it's the angle 5 that's the 4x. So now 4 times 30 
is going to be 120 degrees. And then the last one, find angle X. That's referring to these two angles right here, which are vertical angles. And we're just going to write the equation and not solve it as it ends up being quadratic. Okay. And we spent quite a bit of time reviewing quadratics in our essential skills. So to save some time, I'm just going to skip uh, solving this equation here. All right, next page. Now we're going to talk about perpendicular lines. So if two lines are perpendicular, that means they intersect to form right angles. And from last class, a right angle measures 90 degrees, and that box here indicates the right angle. And if I see a right angle, I know they're perpendicular. So here's the symbol. So if you were to write it out, line AB or BA, doesn't matter how you write it again, is perpendicular to line C, D. So in each question, we're going to find the value of X. Well, when these two line segments intersect, it's telling you that this is a 90 degree angle. And if the two angles then add up to 180, because we have a line right there, this angle has to also be 90. So if we solve this equation by adding 5, we get 4X equals 95. Divide by 4, and we get 23.75. And this question here, uh, I don't know that I have perpendicular lines because I don't see the box. I don't also see a 90 degree angle. All I know is that two angles here form a straight line. So that means they're supplementary because we have a linear pair. So the equation would be 6x minus 3 plus 2x plus 5 equals 180. Combining like terms, 6x plus 2x is 8x. Negative 3 plus 5 is a positive 2 equals 180. Subtract the 2 from 180, and we get 178. Divide by 8, and x is going to be 22.25, or 22 and a quarter. In three and four, so now we have three angles that form a straight line. So all three angles, their measures add up to 180 degrees. So it's x plus 81 plus x equals 180. And I'm going to actually, and I'll show it, subtract the 81 first so that when I bring it down, I can actually combine the x plus x to get 2x. And then 180 minus 81 is 99. Divide by 2, and x is 49 and a half. On the right side, find the value of x and y. Well, there's more than one relationship in this picture. So we have the vertical angles right here. So this one in orange, and then this one also in orange. And then you also have the linear pairs. So here's a linear pair. When possible, you want to try to avoid writing an equation with both an x and y in there. So I'm going to start with the vertical angles because I know that 4x minus 6 equals 2x plus 12. The other relationship I said was the linear pair 4x minus 6 plus y equals 180. But we don't want to start in solving this equation because there's two different unknowns. We want to solve the equation that only has one. So first, we solve this one. So we subtract 2x from 4x, we get 2x. Add the 6 over, we get 18. Divide by 2, and x is 9. Then move to the other equation and substitute the value of x in. So it'll be 4 times 9 minus 6 plus y equals 180. So we have 4 times 9, 36 minus 6 is 30 plus y equals 180, subtract the 30, and y is equal to 150. And then to finish on this page with number 5, this is all numeric. We need to find all three angles. Well, let's start with the vertical angles. So we know A is 168. 
And then let's look at babies, two angles with four millennial pairs. They add up to 180. So let's take 180 and subtract 168, and we get 12. So therefore, B is 12, but also C. Okay. And so to finish with our last page of notes, we're going to start by taking a look at angles around a point and then finish with auxiliary lines. So here's a diagram with one, two, three, four, five angles around a point. And if you were to trace them, right, it would be a full circle, which is 360 degrees. So if I wanted to find, if you trace it, B, B, C, that's this angle here, let's call it X. I know that all three angles around that point, so X plus 136 plus 147 is equal to 360 degrees. So combining our like terms, 136 plus 147 is 283. Then subtracting 283, we get X equals 77. So the measure of angle BDC is 77 degrees. All right, to finish up the auxiliary lines, and I like these questions, I think they're fun, right? So let's first read what they are, and then we'll look at the pictures and how we would actually break it down in order to find X. So an auxiliary line is used when solving for unknown angles that contain parallel lines. We note that uh, this line here is parallel to this one because of the arrows. So it says that this line is the line you draw within the given diagram, and it must be parallel to the other lines. So if I were to find X, I'm going to use the edge of my ruler, and I wanted to draw a line parallel, where would I draw it to help me use the parallel line properties for the angles, such as alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding and same side interior, to help me find X? And where would I do that? Right here through the vertex of our missing angle. So sketch the line parallel. We're going to note it parallel by putting the X. And probably most often you're going to use the alternate interior, but not always. So if this angle is 42, we're now looking at this transversal, so the one going this way. So if this angle is 42, then this angle is the alternate interior, which is also 42 degrees. And then along this transversal, Remember, transversal is just a line that intersects two parallel lines using an alternate interior angle pair. So right here and right here. So if that's 36, then this is 36. So this is to find the whole angle. This is just the whole is equal to the sum of the parts. So X would be equal to 42 plus 36. So X is equal to 78 degrees. And the last one for today, again, we can use our straight edge. Where do we want to add that parallel line to help us find X? It's going to be, again, right through the vertex of the missing angle. So do your best to sketch it parallel. I'm going to note it's parallel by putting the symbol parallel to the other two. And we do have, so look for that alternate interior, and we do have a pair right here. Okay, so if that's 53, this angle in red is also 53. And I don't see, so the only thing that I see are these two, but if I did extend the one parallel line, we could create an alternate interior. We just want to focus on that. So I'm going to call this angle right here Y. So then the alternate interior would be right here. So if you forget that these two angles right here, these are same side interior, you could just use the relationship right here, which is a linear pair. So y plus 143 equals 180. And I just added the angle y, and I called it y so you knew which angle I was referring to. And notice how I labeled it as well, so it's very clear to the person 
reading my work or grading my paper where that angle is. So y is equal to 37. So x is going to be equal to the 37 plus the 53. So final answer is equal to 90 degrees. And that is it for your day two note. Oh, why aren't you playing? What did I do? I'm really going to like pull my hair out if this isn't playing.